welcome in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to those that are joining online. Uh, hopefully you can hear and see us. Uh, uh, apologies, we are a bit late online. We seem to have had some technical difficulties this morning, so uh, we're hoping that you can hear and see us. Please, if you can hear and see, uh, leave us a message, a like, or a, or a comment so that we know that uh, you can actually, you have actually managed to find us. Um, so uh, apologies for the technical difficulties. Before we get going as well, a few announcements. Uh, we have uh, a baptism next week, um, next Sunday, God willing. Uh, we will have our normal service here at 11 o'clock. And then the plan is to maybe bring your lunch with us, uh, uh, eat our lunch together, and then we will proceed up to New Brighton, which is uh, about 20 minutes away. Uh, maybe half an hour away by car um, and uh, there we're on the sea shore uh, God willing weather permitting uh, we will baptize our brother Nigel uh, so that's uh, that is the plan so um, join with us if you can next week also on Thursday a little announcement we're going to have a work day uh, clean up day uh, if you're able to join with us on, on Thursday, anytime during the daytime, if you have a spare moment, please come and join with us. Uh, we would be uh, grateful for any help that we can get on these things. So uh, just uh, cover these things in prayer and uh, uh, we'll just trust you uh, for them uh, now, Lord. Let's, let's give this time to the Lord and we'll... Uh, We'll just uh, we'll get going with our service. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We worship you. Thank you, Lord. We pray for the, the technical side of things to work today, Lord. We pray that you'd cover, uh, protect each one, Lord. Protect those that need your touch. Touch those that are, are, are sick. Uh, again, we mention various ones. We think of Gru Ruby's grandson uh, and daughter. We think of Joyce Morley, uh, Anna Titlow, uh, Donna Diakonu as well with Mary today Lord, Jane, different ones Lord that need a touch, Myrtle and uh, Margaret as well Lord. Thank you Lord for each one Lord and we pray for your, your loving kindnesses, your, your truth, your ways, anoint this time that we pray with your spirit of life and fill us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So uh, today we're going to read from a psalm. We're going to start at the very beginning, Psalm 1. Uh, it's a good psalm. It's a short psalm, but it's uh, a lot in there. We're going to, we'll read it now actually. It says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for uh, your faithfulness. We thank you for your word. We pray that you'd bless and anoint these thoughts now. Fill us with your spirit, Lord. We, we need your spirit of life. We are nothing without you, Lord. But we rely on you, Lord. We desire to hear from you now, Lord. You, you interact with us. You love us. You saved us. You died for us. Lord. And we want to give you the glory now. Fill this time with your life and your spirit and all of your ways now. 
in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay. Yeah. This psalm is a good place for us to come back to. It has a good start. Blessed. That's a good start, isn't it? It is. You know what? Today, whatever things that have gone on, as we said, we've had a lot of technical difficulties, late starting because of it. Um, we uh, maybe have had difficulties this week. Uh, maybe some people have had difficulties with their cars, <laughs> their, their, their work, their, uh, their neighbours, their family, whatever it is. But you know what? We start off today with blessed. Amen. Blessed. Let's start our, 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 our day today with blessed. When we wake up in the morning, Blessed. I know my <laughs> my father when I was growing up used to use it as a. You know, <laughs> where's that blessed bit of paper? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but, uh, but yes. But actually, you know what? We can be blessed. Think about this. Jesus, when he's starting preaching, Sermon on the Mount. First big event. Yeah. First super spreader of the gospel event. <laughs> That's the sort of a, a super spreader event we want. Is the, the one that spreads God's word and truth. Absolutely. Uh, and the and, and love. What's his, what's his first words out of his mouth? Blessed. Sermon on the Mount. Blessed. Wow. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the meek, blessed are the merciful. But you know, like the whole list of them. A whole list of people who are blessed. Uh, it's beautiful. It's good. It's good for us to start off today with that, with, with being blessed. How many blessings do we have? Can we count them? Another old hymn there, but but yeah, but I mean, it's like yeah, we we think about it. We have so many blessings. We are we are looked after, and our God, uh, God is there. He's real. He's true. Let's start out the psalm with blessed. Let's start out the Sermon on the Mount with blessed. Let's start every day with blessed. I know maybe when we wake up in the morning we don't always feel <laughs> blessed. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's like we can confess it. Amen. You know, Absolutely. blessed. Could our pain be a blessing? Could our situation be a blessing? Could the challenges of this life be a blessing? You know, we never know. How God will use things in our life. Mm. But yeah. Blessed is the man. That walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Yeah. Nor standeth in the way of sinners. Nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. And the great thing about this psalm. Psalm 1. Again it's like well. We don't even have to do anything to be blessed here. You know it's like it's not about you know. Oh well. Uh, Blessed are the merciful. So actually, you know, as long as I'm giving a lot of people mercy, then I might be blessed. No, actually here it's about not doing things. Yeah. You know, it's like, well, the whole point is not doing things. You know, we can all not do things, can't we? That's nice and easy. God in his grace makes it nice and easy for us to be blessed. You know, he's not a God that asks, asks yeah. us to jump through hoops or perform. But he's saying is, you know, ble you know, blessed are those people who don't do certain things. Walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. Think about this. There are lots of things that maybe we can be blessed by not doing. You know. Sometimes uh, my wife was on... Uh, 
my the phone to a friend of hers last night who is getting married and she is in her forties. <coughs> I'm not allowed to say <laughs> I didn't say who I didn't say her name. I didn't I didn't say the name of the person so it could be anybody could be anybody. <laughs> But the point is this, think about this actually. Some people rush into relationships when they're teenagers. But some people don't. Some people have, you know, get married at 16. Other people get married later in life. But the point is, what you know, with some people can be blessed in the things that they do. Other people can be blessed in the things that they don't do. Sometimes, you know what, someone who's kept themselves pure for many years and still be blessed in that, you know, people, uh, people are blessed, you know, sometimes people who don't, don't take certain substances can be blessed by not doing it, you know, there's no condemnation, there's forgiveness for those that have, have struggled with things, but you know what, there can be a blessing on our life. You know, and, we, and the point is, even if we, even if we failed in one area, there's probably other areas that we, we, we are strong in, you know. I remember uh, one person saying, you know, oh, you know, I, I, I've never been a great drinker, but I used to be a terrible smoker. Vice, and vice versa, it's like, well, you know what, it's like some different people have different weaknesses, different people have different temptations. But the grace of God is there. Whatever our temptation, whatever our failing has been, you know, and forgiveness is there. Forgiveness is real. Amen. And you know what? There could be blessings in the uh, uh, blessings in the things that we haven't done. You know, and maybe even sometimes we think we we miss out. Or we thought we missed out. You know, oh, I always wanted to go to I don't know South America. Oh, I didn't ever got the chance. And you think you know what? It might be a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> You might have gone to South America and been captured by Colombian drug barons and shot or, <laughs> or imprisoned. You know, we don't know. We, we don't know. But you know what? The, the things that we haven't done can be a blessing. The things, that we have, the things that we have done can be a blessing as well. But the point is, we trust God and he is the one who blesses us today. Wow, blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. And that's a good question, isn't it? Where do we get our counsel from? Where do we get our advisors? Who are the ones that, that give us the, the counsel? Uh, you know, there's this idea that we go to the world for counselling. Yeah, it's great, you know, that's fine. We were talking with, with Nigel just before, actually, about how you know, like the, this world, it has its counsellors, and they can be good, they're well-meaning, they can be helpful. You know, they, they do the best that they can. But the thing is, the best that man can do is human. We have to be careful with that. But to go to God for counsel is much deeper. To go to God for counsel is, is a far greater blessing. You know, trust not, walk not in the counsel of the ungodly you know uh, trust me I'm a doctor what was that no I'm not I'm not a doctor but people say that oh, that used to be a phrase didn't it trust me I'm a doctor oh yeah okay now, could a doctor get something wrong mm. oh yeah what was that there used to be an old uh, friend of mine growing up in school we used to call him Sledge because there was an old TV series called Sledgehammer and I think the guy's catchphrase was trust me I know what I'm doing and then he'd go and do something stupid but you know it's like that's the that's the point isn't it it's like um, you know oh trust me trust trust in me you know no actually we don't we trust God trust the world trust the trust the government yeah. <laughs> trust politicians. Trust, trust, uh, trust scientists. Oh, they're scientists. Oh, they know what they're doing. Mm. They know what they're saying. 
trust, trust scientists. Ooh, yes, well, it's science, so it has to be. But you know what? Look at it first. I'm not saying don't trust doctors. I'm not saying don't trust scientists. <laughs> I'm not saying don't trust politicians. But look at what they're saying first. That's the point. Look into it. What I am saying is trust the Lord. Over and above all of the worldly counsel, all of the ungodly counsel. That is the point. You know, because uh, I was <laughs> thinking about that. You know. Was it Luigi Galvani? Anyone, anyone ever heard of Luigi Galvani? Italian scientist. He discovered animal electricity. I remember doing this. I think I've mentioned this before years ago. Because it, I remember this, this, this vivid story growing up about how he was eating frog's legs and he had a, was it a pewter plate and a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a an iron knife or something like that and basically the the acid because he was Italian you know there's tomatoes on everything you know yeah. the acid um, caused the the um, the, the metal to react and create a current between the plate and the knife and the acid and it made the frog's leg jump off the plate so so this is the point but the thing was you know initially what did he think he think, oh you know what we've discovered life but it wasn't you know we've discovered how to to make something that was dead alive again yeah, this is it. This is where the, the Frankenstein. Um, but but what they did discover actually was was the nervous system has electrical impulses, which we know now. But you know what? The initial thought was wrong. And this is the this is the danger with the counsel of the ungodly. It's like when you know we we do experiments. Yeah, fine, great, but it doesn't always mean to say what we think. Um, I, I remember. I can't remember the details now, but I know that there was there was something I read a few years back now about the dinosaurs, and like the, like they were saying that dinosaurs they think died out was it um, 65 million years ago, and then another expert came along and sort of said, oh no, it it was 30 million years ago. Now we've adjusted it. You're still thinking. So your margin of error, <laughs> your, your, your slight margin of error there is what, 35 million years. <laughs> and then you expect us to trust you. You know, and this is the point, isn't it? It's like, well, yeah, the world can have its, its uh, experts. But you know what? We, 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 we can trust them where trust is due. We look at what they're saying. We trust what... what, what we take what is what might be good, but the point is we don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. There's a blessing when we don't take everything that the world says to us. There's a blessing when we live by God's word and not by just government policy or advice or whatever it is. We trust the Lord in all these things. Wow. Wow. I know we've uh, we've mentioned him before, but um, in Second uh, Samuel chapter seventeen, there's this guy there, Ahithophel. Yeah, he was a counselor to David, and he gave good counsel. But the thing was that when Absalom was rebelling against David. Ahithophel decided he was going to side with Absalom and give counsel to Absalom. And it was only because of uh, David's friend Hushai who said, well, I'll go in there and I'll mix it up a bit. I'll go in there and say, well, we could do it that way or we could do it this way and just give it an opposite view of what the... Uh, and God blessed David because David was the Lord's anointed. David was a man after God's own heart. And that was the point that, you know, David was God's, God's man. The one who God had chosen to be with. Absalom, his own son, was against him. But the counsel of Ahithophel, 
Though it was good counsel, it was good advice, God turned it to foolishness. Why? Because it was against God. It was against God's plan. And um, it was against the Lord's anointed. And it's like, wow. So in um, 2 Samuel 17, it says in verse 23, And when Ahithophel saw his counsel was not followed, he saddled his ass and arose, and got him home to his house, to his city, and put his household in order, and hanged himself, and died, and was buried in the sepulchre of his father. Wow. Mm. Great. That was the wisdom of this world. That was the wisdom of, 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 of below. Good advice to Absalom, but against God's man, against God's plan. But worldly advice, if it's not taken, it has no purpose. The counsel of the ungodly, uh, if people don't <laughs> follow it, it's like, well, what, what is the point, you know? What is, what, what is the purpose of it? Ahithophel, he, he, had, he had advice to Absalom, but his, his advice was not taken. Ahithophel thought, well, there's no point going on. I have no purpose. And sadly, he took that decision. You know, this is the problem when we, when we leave God out of the equation, when God is, is on the back burner, when God is ignored. There is no hope. But actually, you know what? Again, we're saying this this morning. We have a source of hope that is infinite. We have a source of hope that goes on. We have a source of hope that is limitless. When we seek the Lord for his advice, when we look to him for, for godly counsel, is he going to give us bad, bad advice? Are we going to find something that, 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 that is wrong? No. We look to the Lord for his purpose, his counsel. You know, in uh, James 3, it says in uh, verse 13, Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him sh show out of good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom now we were talking about that funnily enough on Wednesday I think. Um, Jesus how he, he uh, increased in wisdom and actually we, meekness and wisdom they went together uh, back then when we were talking about that on Wednesday night and, and again they leaped together here The meekness of wisdom. And you know what? This is the passage where it goes on to talk about the wisdom that is from below and the wisdom that is from above. You can read that for homework. It's a few verses down. But, um, but yeah, there is a wisdom that is from below. But it doesn't bring anything good. But there's also a wisdom that is from above, which is easily entreated. There's a wisdom that comes from above. You know, it was very sad to hear of what happened in Plymouth the other day, the shooting, and, uh, and these things are demonic. People, uh, but the, one of the saddest things was that to, to, to more or less hear that the man had no hope. This world needs the hope of God. This world needs godly counsel. 
this world needs to hear about a loving Savior, to hear about a God of forgiveness. Now, we're not condoning anything that was done. We're not sort of saying, oh, this poor guy was a victim. No, I think they're, they're, people go, go down that route, they open themselves up to things that are demonic. But you know what? We pray for the victims, the families, and the, and the um, and for Plymouth as a as a whole. But you know, uh, people need that hope. Yeah. People need that. People need the wisdom from above. Proverbs. It tells us in Proverbs fourteen. Verse 12. There's a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Again, it's heavy. It's very sad. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners. There is a way that this world has. There's the way of sinners. There's a way of a man. There's a way that might seem right. Oh, but we do the right thing. Oh, we, we're a good person. We're a good citizen. We, we follow the rules. We, 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 we do everything that is right in our own eyes. Remember the book of Judges. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Great, okay, but actually the book of Judges, what was happening? Constant judgment, constant uh, enemies of the, of the nation coming in, constantly God was having to, when the people cried out to God. Two, two refrains in the book of Judges that you see again and again in different chapters. One is, uh, every man did that which was right in his own eyes. And then later, when, when things have gone terrible and the people cried out to the Lord and the Lord raised up a judge. Wow. God is there. He's waiting for people to cry out and to realize, you know, how things are going. And to realize actually that the way of man, the way of their own desires, it doesn't work. There's a way that seems right to a man, but the ends thereof are the ways of death. Wow. Wow. That was the curse of the kings as well, the kings of Israel every time. You know, and it says, and they walked not in the ways of David. They walked in the ways of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. Or maybe sometimes it says, oh, they walked in the ways of Omri or Ahab. Or, you know, it's like, and, uh, and sometimes it says that he walked in his father's ways, but not according to the Lord. To walking in in the ways uh, in a wicked way. Wow. But before you walk, before you walk it in counsel of the ungodly, you stand. Don't you? Before you before you walk, you actually have to stand up. And standing in the way here of sinners, it's like, wow. In other words, don't even look in that direction. Don't even stand and look and say, oh. Like uh, Lot did when he chose a well-watered plain. But there was Sodom and Gomorrah. He's like, oh, yeah, I'll just stand here for a bit and look. Oh, it's a nice view, isn't it? <coughs> but, uh, yeah. No, it's like, well, don't stand in the way of a sinner. Don't, don't just stand together with people. Don't band yourself together with those that are, that are, are uh, due towards sin. You know, sometimes you see these stickers where it says, I stand with such and such a cause, I stand with this and it's like, you know what, we stand with the Lord 
you know, we walk with the Lord. Actually, we should have done this as a study in, in line with the book of Ephesians, really. Because you've got, you've got, uh, um, we are seated in heavenly places in Ephesians. And, and we walk in the light and we, and we walk with the Lord and, and we take a stand, we stand firm. So these things are, you know, it's another, it's another message. Uh, <laughs> another time. But yeah, um, but yeah, don't stand in the way of sinners. You know, uh, Mark chapter 8. <laughs> it says there in verse 31. And he began to teach that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again and he spake that saying openly and Peter took him and began to rebuke him but when he had turned about and looked on his disciples he rebuked Peter saying get thee behind me Satan for thou savourest not the things that be of God but the things that be of men and you know what it's true you know we, we, we look at this world and the, and the advice of this world and we live for down here and we live according to oh this is what this is what we should be doing this is how we should be living our life this is what the world says this is what but actually you know what Jesus says to Peter get behind me Satan because there's the way of the world, there's the way of the sinners, but there's the way of the cross. That is the real, that is the real difference. The way of sinners. Stand not in the way of sinners, but stand in the way of the cross. The Lord Jesus Christ came to proclaim that. The way of the cross. I'm going, I've come here, I've come onto the earth, and I'm going to the cross. And I'm going to lay down my life for sin. I'm not going to stand in the way of sinners, but I actually am going to pay for sin. I'm going to take the responsibility for it all. That's the point. That's the message of the gospel. Is that Christ didn't stand in the way of sinners, but he paid the price for sinners. The cross is the way that he stood stand in the way of the cross mm. that is the that is the answer that is our, our answer today that is the answer for our life that is the answer for eternity that is the answer for each one the way of the cross you know we we we, we get so caught up in our own way so often i know i, I do very often it's like what am I doing today? What am I? What do I want to do? What am I? What am I planning to do? And then, you know, often these things don't work out the way that we think. You know, I have a plan to do this today, and then it's like oh, that didn't work. I have a plan to do this, and oh, that didn't work. But actually, you know what? We put our plans with God, and it's like ah, oh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Bring it to the cross. Bring it back to the Lord. And also to sit in the in the seat of the scornful. <laughs> wow. We won't be so much longer because, uh, although we start a bit late, but um, yeah, to sit in the seat, sit in the seat of the scornful. Blessing when we don't sit in the seat of the scornful. Blessing for not being scornful. Blessing for not deriding, not despising. Blessing for not uh, mocking, in one sense. You know, it's like... Think about that as well. It's a relaxed place, isn't it? 
scorn. It's a nice sort of, <laughs> yeah, well, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, sit in the seat of the scornful. We, can, we, we, we sit back and there's satisfaction there. There's self-satisfaction there. There's a form of pride there as well. Isn't there? Yeah, look. <laughs> uh, it's like, it's funny, I mean, you sort of watching the Olympics, you know, and uh, it's like, there's this, you know, these gymnasts or something like that or whoever it is, and run, runners, and it's like, you know, and, and then they fail to get the, the, the gold medal. And, you know, we're sitting at home going, Pff, fancy that, you know. Oh, I like that gymnast, you know, put a foot wrong, you know, and you're thinking, yeah, half the time you struggle to get up off the floor yourself, and it's like, <laughs> but it's like, well, but, but, yeah, it's like, well, yo, yeah, oh, but, I, but I'm, uh, I'm going to sit back and I'm going to watch, you know, sit back and watch the TV, and I'm, I'm the expert now. Okay. Why? Now, it's interesting because there is a link, there's a strong link in Scripture that I never noticed before, but it's between judgment and being seated. And it, you, you see it again and again. It's only when I sort of was studying this out last night that I suddenly realised, actually, you know what? It's true. You see it, you know, sitting in judgment yeah. is a thing, you know. And when the God judges, where, where is that? You know, like for the unbeliever, it's the great white throne judgment. And, and God the Father will sit and judge the world. But even for the believer, it's the beamer seat and the and the lord jesus christ received his saints well done good and faithful servant and the and the rewards are given out but each case it's it's a it's a place of of, of being seated when the lord jesus christ paid the price for mankind it tells us in hebrews that he sat down at the right hand of god why? Because now he was fit to judge. Now he was he was he was there. He was he was ready. The judgment had been uh, had been done. The price had been paid, and and it's like no, there was nothing that needed to be added to it. The Old Testament priests they were standing daily because they were making sacrifices. They were making intercession. They were burning incense. They were. They were do, doing things and it, they, they were standing there the whole time. The Lord Jesus Christ sat down. And there's this link in Scripture between being seated and judgment. Which is wonderful when it's the Lord, when it's God's perfect judgment, when it's holy judgment, when it's set apart. That's a great thing. But the trouble is for man, we have a sinful heart, don't we? We are, we are, we are not <coughs> divine. We don't, we don't know everything. And the problem for man is that when we sit down, human pride enters in there. And if we're not careful, we can sit in the seat of the school and pass judgment on situations and say, look at them. That's it. Fancy doing that, fancy saying that, fancy being, you know, oh, uh, yeah, oh, what are they, you know, and, and we all do it, we all do it, oh, what are they like, you know, we watch the TV, we complain about the news, the government, the, the, the you know, people, celebrities, oh, fancy doing that, you know what, and if we're not careful, we can sit in the seat of the school. But you know what? There's another place we can be sitting. Heavenly places. You know, and there's a, there is a, a blessing when we are not sitting in the seat of the scornful. We are blessed today. We are blessed people today. Because we are delivered from these things. We're not walking in the counsel of the ungodly. We're not going to stand in the way of sinners and we're not going to sit in the seat of the scornful. But we have our delight in the law of the Lord. 
And that is the thing, isn't it? It's like we haven't got very far with this song. We'll continue on a little bit tonight, maybe. Um, more on, on in this direction. But, uh, but just think about that. The result of not being involved with those things is delight. Delight in the Lord. Delight in the in the in the law of the Lord. The, the delight comes in when we know the heart of God. When we know the heart of grace towards us. When we know the forgiveness of sins. When we know the Savior. When we know that the price is paid. That Jesus has done the work. Then there is delight. There is relief. There is joy. There is peace. In his presence there are pleasures evermore. This is what awaits us as believers. And like we said, it's not about us doing anything, it's about us not doing. <laughs> it's not about our, ourselves and our performance, it's about what the Lord Jesus Christ accomplished for us. The delight is there for us. The joy is there for us. And we are able to, to enter into that, participate in that, through the, the way of the cross, the way of hope. Jesus made it known to his disciples. There was somebody I heard recently say, you know, Jesus was the, uh, Peter was the first health and safety expert. Say, oh, you know what? You don't don't do that, Jesus. Oh no, it's not. <laughs> That's not safe. No, oh, don't be saying, don't be talking like that. But, uh, <laughs> but um, no condemnation if you're involved in health and safety. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, it's like no. Jesus says no. It's not about. That. It's not about dust down here. It's not about this life. It's about eternity. It's not about our performance. It's not about um, what is going on around us. It's about eternity. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We worship you today, Lord. And we just want to give you the, 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 the praise and the glory that is due to your name, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you're a God that starts us off with being blessed. The beginning of Genesis was a blessing. The beginning of, of the Psalms is a blessing. The beginning of John's Gospel was a blessing. The beginning of the uh, Sermon on the Mount was blessing. Time and time again, Lord, you start us off with a blessing. Thank you, Lord, for these words today, Lord. And thank you, Lord, that we can be blessed people because of what you've done. Because we're not walking in our own ways we're not walking in the world around us the counsel of the ungodly standing in the way of sinners but Lord we have the option and the option is trusting you the wisdom from above the way of the cross your delight thank you Lord thank you Lord that you fill us with your joy you fill us with ways that are, are beyond self. Ways that are beyond mankind. You give us something that is divine. Something that is eternal. Something that we can cling to for all time. Mm. Lord, we thank you. We worship you. We love you today. Fill us with your life, Lord. Mm. And Lord, we pray, if there's anyone out there who's, who's never received Christ as Savior, who doesn't know what it means, uh, to trust you Lord we just pray that this would be the time when they say Lord I want my life to be different I don't want to walk in the in the, the wisdom of this world struggle on with, with failings with discouragement but I want to trust the living God I want to trust a God who has made a way perfect for us I want to trust a saviour who loves me Lord, I, I ask you in. I ask you to come in. Forgive me. Heal me. Guide me. Lord, we, we 
We love you today, Lord. We pray that you'd bless this time now. Minister your life to each one, Lord. Yes, Lord. Us. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, for those who are online, and we have got somebody online, which is good. Um, uh, we uh, hope to see you later and uh, join us again at 8 o'clock. That would be great. Join us for the baptism if you can next week live. Uh, and, uh, uh, for now, we'll say goodbye. See you soon.